Hello everyone, welcome to round number 10 of the Free Candidates 2022 in Madrid. And one of the highlights of this round is Hikaru Nakamura's bounce back win against Alariza Ferruza. It was a puzzle rush like execution by Nakamura. Let's check it out. He was worried 24 and other surprising C5 Bay through the he's known for his Karokan. But then again, he played Night Dwarf here. He wasn't successful in his first Night Dwarf. Yeah. And I don't know why he played this one. He lost to Nepomniachi in the previous Night Dwarf game. And here's the second one. And both games he lost with the Night Dwarf. He says Bishop E3. E5, knight of 3 okay, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop e6, knight e5. Okay, this pawn is not free here. Knight takes e4, loses into bishop e6. Yeah, attacking the queen, knight c7 is coming up. All right, a double attack on the rook and the king. So rook c8, knight takes f6. And here, Firuza played a novelty, which is a bit dubious. Okay, the line here previously is queen takes f6. There are games played by Adams and also Lagrave with queen takes f6. You go takes an e6, you can capture with the pawn or queen, castles, and then queen g6, yeah. which is just equal. But Firuza went for g takes f6. He tries to combine this idea in the pelican, you know, this invention of this G takes, yeah. All right, Nakamura went back to B3. Main point, main point for white here is that once, okay, once blacks exchange, okay, once black exchanges bishop on B3, then white could get this F5 square, especially when you have this double pawn. So knight e7, castles, takes, takes, still in the spirit of the Sebeshnikov or the pelican by Firuza. d5 takes, queen takes d5, of course. You don't exchange queens, queen e2. Rook fd1, the control of the d file, and this one, a bad king on e8. Queen c6, c4. Bishop g7, played by Firuza. Well, if he wants to go for this one, then might as well play rook g8, yeah. But he went for bishop g7. He wants to castle and rook d5, castles. Okay, d1, again, Nakamura controls the imported open file. Rook f8, h3, king safety. Luft, and actually this is very nice prophylactic move by Nakamura, and you will see later in the game why h3 was very important b5 c5 okay bishop into f8 b4 Nakamura now has a fixed pass pawn the c pawn and he can also use that one as a distraction for black knight b4 all right now puzzle puzzle rush time by hikaru Let's start from here and here Nakamura went for knight takes d4, allowing Firuza to win the exchange between takes d5. But Nakamura was ready for that one with knight f5 again with the double pawn. He put that knight on f5, and the knight can sleep there forever. Weakness is this g7 square. Look at this g5. King is the target. Firuza went for queen e4, hitting the knight and the pawn on b4, but it doesn't matter. Queen h5, protecting the knight. Firuza played rook d8. Now let's take a look at takes on b4 here straight away. We're going to take on b4 with the queen on h5. White has rook d7, and it's unstoppable. Okay, you can go queen b3, or queen c4, maybe queen c4 to protect both. But then again, bishop h6. Once white gets rid of the bishop, game over. 
the bishop controls the important g7 square the weak point on g7 what to do let's say rook cd8 rook ed8 whatever okay then i can go b3 first yeah. with the queen's protecting g4 yes if you take on b3 now i can execute queen g4 king h8 bishop g7 takes and checkmate if you move back knight h6 is mate so that's the execution now when the opponent has a double pawn put the knight on f5 the outpost on f5 and you have a higher chance of course of winning so queen h5 rook d8 nice move by nakamura rook is it attacking a6 or something else we will see Rook c6, okay, protecting a6, yeah, and f6 at the same time. Now is the start, bishop a6. The bishop, the queen, the knight, and that rook against the lonely king. King a8, rook lift, nice, one. The rook comes into the game, right? It's not really attacking a6, but this line over here. The g5. Queen takes b4, takes an f8. The puzzle rush champion, Hikaru Nakamura. Rook takes f8, queen a6, threatening mate on g7. Rook g8, rook g3, removing the defender, the g7 defender. After takes, f takes, and Firuza had enough. He resigned. There are two mates here. One on f8 and one on g7, and both mates, both squares, black cannot defend. The principle of two weaknesses in you have two threats, f8 and g7. Black cannot stop both. Okay, he can take with a check and king h2. And how do you protect g7? And with that, Nakamura still has a slight chance with five and a half. It was an unfortunate loss to Rajabov yesterday. Okay, going into the last four games, he needs to win all. Yeah. Again, another draw by Nepomniachi. Nepomniachi is just cruising, drawing his games comfortably. You now he has seven, Nakamura with five and a half. So that was it. It's still anybody's game, but seven points by Nepo is it's, it's a big advantage, though. But anything can happen in just one or two games. You lose one or two, you play, you play a bad day, a bad game, and your chances will be doomed. So Nepo has just to be careful in the last four because the others are catching up. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting our channel, Charles Max Chess and Charles Max Entertainment on Facebook and YouTube. This is Coach Oliver. Stay safe, everyone.